What mysteries lie in the deep, dark forests of your world? Concealed in the midst of ancient, gnarled trees that time forgot, perhaps we find mystical fey creatures, ancient curses, slumbering beasts, and pokey thorn bushes that really hurt, and like little, little ticks that just get... Forests are an integral part of most fantasy worlds, and in today's video we'll talk about how to get them just right on your fantasy map. Hi everybody and welcome. My name is Nate and you are watching WASD20, a channel about tabletop RPGs and fantasy maps. In today's video we're going to be covering how to draw forests, trees, vegetation for your fantasy map, and we'll be starting with actually talking about the various styles you might consider. Then, as we actually put pen to paper and start drawing our forests, we'll also talk about some considerations for where it makes sense to place your forests on your map. So first, you think you might want some woods? How do you draw them? Well, I did do a video a while back that covered, I think, seven different styles of forests for your map. The very first style that I ever kind of latched onto was this kind of bushy, cloudy-looking clump of forest. There was no distinction between individual trees, and I think this can look really good. You notice that I do some kind of vertical hatching for the tree trunks in front, and that also gives it some dimension. And there are several variations of this style that I've played with over the years. If you want to check out lots of my different styles and kind of see some of the progression over the years and the things I've experimented with, go over to sellswordmaps.com and you can see my full portfolio over there. But moving on from that sort of singular cluster of trees, you can also get into something that does distinguish a little more between individual trees, this sort of overlapping individual tree method that still tends to form one big cluster of trees. It can look really good. It's definitely more time consuming. It's a little bit tedious, but it can look excellent. I use this style on the Iskloft map, which I drew about a year ago now. And you can also see this style on Devin Rue's maps, who's a very popular cartographer who's drawn some maps for the Critical Role folks and a bunch of others. Lastly, we get into the more individual and spaced out trees, and that's the method that I will be using on this map. Now, it is possible to draw individual trees with great detail, and that can look really good. However, the scale at which we are drawing is pretty small and it's gonna be hard to really get a lot of detail on a tree so tiny. My mountains are already pretty small and I want to make my trees smaller than them and honestly it just might not show up that well. It might actually confuse the eye like I can tell there's something going on there but I can't quite tell what it is. So I'm going with a very simple classic triangle with a trunk. In the individual tree method, you could also use a rounder tree or an oval tree, but for me, I'm just going to be sticking with the classic triangle throughout the entire map. In addition, I'll be making a little hint of a shadow on the right side of my trees, just as I had the right side of my mountains shaded. I will be doing this by just kind of scratching in two faint lines on the right side of the tree. So that is the style that I will be using for this map, but of course you experiment, play around with different styles, look around at others' maps, and find what works for you. So that's enough on the styles of forests, and next we are going to be getting down to drawing on the actual map we've been making in this series. But before we do that, I want to take a moment to thank my sponsor for this video, World Anvil. You probably know it's the best tool around for world builders and RPG game masters, and it just got even better with their latest update called Heroes. It's a new and improved interactive campaign tool set for players, game masters, and their audiences. I recently jumped in and imported one of my existing characters, and I was amazed at the slick tools and the ways it encourages interaction and character development. As a GM, I can't wait to get more of my campaign info into Heroes and start sharing it with my players and getting them interacting as well. It's an incredible way to keep the tabletop RPG experience alive even when we can't be at the table together. I wish I had time to show you all the amazing features in Heroes, but you really just need to go check it out for yourself. There's a link down in the video description. Thanks, World Anvil! Alright, so now we are going to begin actually drawing them here on our map. So, just a couple notes as I begin drawing here. First, I am using my smallest pen here. This is my 005 in the Pigma Micron. 
And uh, definitely it's gonna be a challenge to make my trees nice and small here. I definitely want them to be smaller than my mountains. Now I am starting by just drawing the triangular portion of the tree. And then I'm gonna go back in later and put all my trunks and I'm gonna go back later and put all my shadows, etc. So as I continue drawing here, just a couple things, I am going to be saving some space for text. You'll see that I'm going around some uh, areas I've blocked off for text later. And also I'm just trying to draw tree symbols really is what I'm going for here. I'm trying to find a balance of what looks cool and what also communicates what this is. We're not going for hyper realism here. We're going for a very stylized look. And really these are small enough that I could probably just do a single line for the trunk rather than two lines that I started doing. All right, and then we can do just a little hint of shadow as I mentioned before. This also kind of has the benefit of just providing a little texture to your forest in the ground there. Oh, I missed some tree trunks. It always happens. Now, as we're drawing one big point that we need to talk about is where are we likely to find forests? So one thing you probably notice right away here is I have mine surrounding, I like to nestle them in by mountains, first of all. That's one thing I definitely am a fan of. And uh, that does happen in nature quite a bit. And another thing to keep in mind here is they're right by this river and you probably noticed that. Uh, that means that this area is going to be well watered and is therefore likely to see some vegetation. So forests are often nestled in the shadow of mountains and that looks nice and also uh, around rivers that also seems to make sense. Uh, but other than that another thing to consider definitely is the rain shadow. So the main thing to keep in mind with the rain shadow effect is that one side of a mountain range is often in reality quite dry and the other side gets a lot of rainfall and has a lot of vegetation therefore. So this side right here you can see is quite dry. This is actually going to be a desert and this side right here is actually very heavily forested. So what's probably happening here in this case is the prevailing wind direction is going this way. A lot of moisture is blown across the ocean and maybe across this lake too and the clouds become very wet but in order to raise up they must release their moisture as they get higher and higher so they do so on this side of the mountain range leaving very little moisture as they descend to the other side of the mountain or something like that i am not a scientist i did explain this a little bit better as well as some other geographical principles that can help us make better maps in a video a while back and i will put a link to it right up there Now the rain shadow effect does not occur everywhere. There are many ranges that are heavily forested on both sides. This is more likely to happen if the range is a lower range, which means it's probably an older mountain range. And uh, the rain shadow effect will be more pronounced in a higher mountain range. Something more to consider in terms of placement of your forests uh, is try to consider the level of technology in your setting. Um, is it a very advanced civilization that has developed the ability to really cut down a lot of trees for whatever purpose they need? Um, or is it a more agrarian society that's a little bit less developed? Is it the level of technology of, say, uh, medieval Europe? Well, then if so, there's probably going to be a lot of forests, depending on the geography, of course. But if we look at some of these images, for example, you can see that Central Europe was almost completely covered in forest. This was also true of the Americas and many other parts of the world, and nowadays we have much less. Still, if you're doing a setting that's similar to a medieval Europe, which is a common kind of fantasy trope, you can think of it this way. We're not gonna cover this whole area in trees as Europe really kind of was. Instead, we are drawing symbols for some of the more distinctively featured dense forests of this land. There's going to be other forests in between, there's going to be lots and lots of trees, but we're just drawing the most distinctly featured forests that are extremely dense. 
Before you go filling all your land with forests, it's also worth considering whether or not you want to save some space for other geographical features, things like swamps and deserts and prairies and things like that that we will be covering a little bit in future videos. So a couple common mistakes that I see when I'm looking at people's maps and they're doing a style similar to this, one is that they're too big. Um, making these trees nice and small makes them look much better, in my opinion. I suppose it is possible to make them too small, but it's much harder. Another thing is just to pay attention to your shape. Are you getting a fairly nice and elongated shape to your trees, or is it kind of too messy and, and, you know, equilateral triangle, uh, a little too squat? And the other thing to keep in mind is spacing them fairly dense. I would say that in here, actually, mine are a little bit too sparse at this time, and so, um, you know, maybe just sticking in another tree or two in there. One of the big advantages to this individual tree method is that now that we're pretty much done with the major forests of the map here, we can feel free to kind of pepper in other smaller forests or even individual trees as we see fit. Something that looks really good and it's something that's harder to get to look good in that more clustery tree style. As I finish up with the last bit of drawing here, I do want to thank my patrons so much for their support. Patrons are people who support this channel on a monthly basis. They're amazing. I couldn't do it without them. And you too can join with them. If you like what you see here and you want to support, head over to patreon.com slash WASD20 and check it out. There are some pretty cool rewards, including weekly live map drawing streams that are available at just the $2 a month level. All right, everybody, that is going to do it for our forests on this map, at least for the time being. We'll see what the future holds. Lots more mapping ahead, so make sure you are subscribed. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and thank you so much for joining me. I want to thank World Anvil once again for their amazing support as a sponsor. Make sure you go check them out at worldanvil.com and check out that new Heroes update. It's really good. All right, take care, everybody. Happy mapping. You'll see me again very soon.